one. All right, it is time. Big Ten West preview time. Not I as like exciting it. as the Big Ten East. No, it's just not as many big names, but it's still exciting. Uh, okay. Like it, to me, it's exciting. Yeah, no. We get to talk about our West Lot Pirate Boys. No, that's right. That's right. The, the, I like a lot of the schools in the West. <laughs> I do like a lot of these schools. It's a, look. It's a, it's a smaller go at it. We got some new faces. We got all kind of different stuff. Um, we'll start out with Illinois. Just going to get that out of the way. Over under. Over under for Illinois is three and a half. Huh. Which is amazing. They went two and ten last year. Vegas seems to think they'll be a game and a half better. I, I just don't think that Vegas ever likes making college teams less than three. Yeah, you're probably right. I got them two and ten. I got them three and nine. You got them three. Who? Who are I don't, you? I have no idea, Gary. I'm just just telling you, okay. Who have you got them beating? Kent State, Western Illinois, and Rucker. You, you think they're going to be? They're going to win at Rutgers. Rutgers He's hasn't won a got away. Rutgers Pist- hasn't won a conference. Pist- got away. How do you say that? Garbage. How do you? Garbage. I will never. I will never. I'll tell you this. I'll never pick. Lovey Smith pick. doesn't just go into New Jersey and come out with a win. That don't happen. He so, was an NFL coach. Rutgers is so a trash bag. That it, Rutgers went four and eight last year. All right. Let me know whenever Lovey goes four and eight. We've spent too much time on <laughs> Illinois already. Next up is Iowa. I love this team. Now they're over Kurt, under seven. Kurt and a half. Ferentz is one of my favorite coaches. So. The the Big Ten, I have a lot more coaches that I like than I dislike. I was over under seven and a half. Last year they were eight and five. I've got them nine and three. Got them nine and three. You and I have seen the Big Ten pretty pretty dang close. I think I think you're probably right. What are they, the, what are the big games that you have them? Either well, here, hold on, hold on. Let's let's go through why we like them so much. They got seven offensive starters back. Oh, yeah. Nathan Stanley is back. Uh, they've also got four of the top six receivers coming back. Akram Wadley's gone. Yeah. So it, that and that's a problem. They have the best receiver gone, but they've got a bunch but coming out. Kirk Ferentz always finds a running back, so that's I'm not right. worried about that. Uh, they've got three or five starters back on the offensive line. Look for Torin Young and Ivory Kelly uh, Martin to split carries. So Ivory, uh, whatever his name, is, Martin. That dude last year was a, a bowling ball when he got the ball. Like his yards per carry average was insane. They have six defensive starters back. They're replacing all three linebackers, but they got three or four back on the D-line and three or four back in the secondary. They've got experience. they got leadership back. That's a big deal. I've got Iowa losing to Wisconsin, and I almost had that as a W. Um, I got them losing to Wisconsin, losing at Penn State, and, d- 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 oh, I got them losing to Iowa State. And I know that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. But... I, this game always like no, I was always close. good, and it's always just a ridiculous game. And they lose to Iowa State when they're supposed to beat them, and they they beat them when they're supposed to lose to them, and that's just a weird rivalry. I don't understand it, but I think that because they went into Iowa State last year, I think Iowa State's going to be amped up in week two for this one. Get, give me Iowa State to win that one. So we got the same record. We've only got one win loss. It's the same. Okay. I got them beating Wisconsin. Okay, and that would make perfect sense because it's well, it's, it's a home at game. Wisconsin, and they no, it's not at Wisconsin. I mean, it's, it's at a, Iowa. Yeah, and it's they take one great team every year, bring them into Iowa, and don't just beat them. They kick the crap out of them. I, I think they're going to do that to Nebraska at the end of the year. Well, but I actually yeah. have them losing to Nebraska. I think Scott Frost's a good coach, and I think at the end of the year, I trust him more than I trust him at the beginning of the year. I don't know if I trust him at Iowa. It's just, Not on Thanksgiving weekend. Well, and, and I mean, I could be easily wrong on this. You know, I don't like picking the actual games. I just want to give you a record and kind of get out of it. Um, the the hold on, where are we at? So I've got them. Penn State. We have. Okay. I've got the Nebraska, and I actually have them losing at Purdue. You, you've got. <laughs> wait a minute. What? I've got them losing at Purdue. You got them losing at Purdue. That is the most Iowa Kurt Ferentz thing to do. Yeah, you're probably right. They lose. All right, so I've got them losing at home to Iowa State. You've got them losing at Purdue. Purdue. Here's the deal. Every year they will lose one or two games to somebody they should just beat the crap out of. And somebody who's a double-digit favorite than them will come in and they'll beat them by 40. This has happened for the last decade of me watching Kurt Ferentz at Iowa. Yeah, it happened it, definitely last year with the Ohio State. Game. I find them incredibly entertaining to watch. 
I like them a lot. And but they're they're predictable in the sense of I know what's going to happen big picture. You just never know when it's going to happen, which makes even the bad games kind of exciting because this could be the game they blow. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota, we'll move on to them. We'll, we'll roll through them. Minnesota, uh, they went 5-7 and seven last year. Their over-under is 6. I've got them going over. All right, I got them going under. I got them one game less than last year. All right, so you – Four and eight. You got them four and eight. Yeah, you game, don't like P.J. Fleck. One game after last year. I mean, I just think it's going to take time. I think that conference is better than – I don't know. I mean, you might be right. Look, they got seven starters back on offense, seven starters back on defense. Uh, the you redshirt could, freshman uh, Tanner Morgan – uh, he's there's a JUCO dual threat named Vic Vera Montez that's battling for the quarterback job. Both of which are PJ Fleck guys. That's a yeah. good thing. So as soon as he gets his guy in there, that's going to be good. They their top three receivers are back. Uh, running back Rodney Smith over a thousand yards last year. They got four out of five offensive linemen returning. Six of their top nine tacklers are back on defense, including all three starting linebackers. It is a tough schedule though. That was what I was going to get into. Their first three games, two of them, they're all non-conference. But two of them, Fresno State and Miami, Ohio, are perennially like those little guys you don't want to play. In Miami of Ohio, those kids go into and, – and the University of Ohio yeah, both recruit just like the Big Ten – these are all the rejects that didn't get into the Big Ten, and when they play Big Ten teams, they they amp they up. give them all they want. I've got I got them. I think they're going to lose one of those two games. I'm not saying they're going to lose which one. I don't know. See, their first three are at home. I think PJ Fleck will have these guys amped up. I think they're going to win all three of those. I don't know, man. Um, but Miami of Ohio. If they win the first two, I think they lose, and I would bet money line action on the Miami Ohio game. That's just a Ooh. that's just a thing that happens. Those MAC teams don't like these Big Ten teams because they think they're better than them. It's the same thing when big boy teams come into Memphis. You think you're better than us, and we send you home with L's. That's it, true. It it happens all the time. We recruit against the same kids. We're not a whole lot different. The money you make and the money we make is light years not comparable. But when we line up man on man, we're not afraid. I got them losing at home to Iowa, at Ohio State, at Nebraska. Then I've got them losing at home to Northwestern and losing at Wisconsin. Oh, man. So I've I got, got them seven and five. I got them eight losses. I'm not going to go through all of them. But what I found most interesting was I think that you and I are going to be very different on Purdue. Uh, probably. I think we're going to be very different on Purdue this year. We'll get there. We'll we'll get down there. Um, but either way, uh, let's move on. Let's move to Nebraska. Over under is six this year. Nebraska went. Da, da, da. Four and eight last year. I'm a huge Scott Frost fan. Four I do think it's going to take time eight. to get like real good level. Well, that offense has to get clicking, right? But but I think he is an exceptional coach. Yeah, I think he is too. Uh, Nebraska's got seven starters back on offense, eight starters back on defense. Does that none matter, of that though? matters? Anything I was just about because to say, does that matter? No, because it, one, it means they've got experience, but they don't have experience with this coach. So, it, it's, what are the chances that they are the starters? I mean, um, when you've got a coach that's going to run an offense this drastically different. Well, you, the I, biggest thing is the quarterback well, position, okay, right? And yeah. and they've got a true freshman, Adrian Martinez, that looks like he's going to win the quarterback that's job. Right. And that, so that's Scott's guy. Yeah. So, so top five running backs all return. They only lose two of their top eight receivers. Nine upperclassmen are starting on defense. I'm not getting into starters and whatnot, no. but like nine upperclassmen will be starting on defense. And that's a good thing because you've got guys that understand how to work, how to teach the younger guys, all that good stuff. Who you got? Uh, I have Nebraska going seven and five. I got them three games better than they were last year. I got them seven and five too. I was really close going six and six. And you want to know why? Why is that? There's a non-conference game in there of a coach that I think is better than him. Ah, uh, you are talking about Neil Brown at Troy. I Neil, I know they went into LSU, and maybe I'm a little biased and skewed. Neil Brown's a really good coach, and they are going to be ready. They're going to say, "Hey, this is our Super Bowl," just like Baton Rouge was. And it would not shock me if he goes into Nebraska and, and comes away with a W. I think that because that game is right before Michigan, I could see it. I, that, that, that would but not shock me at all. When they, and it's right after they play Colorado at home. Yeah. But I do think that Scott Frost is smart enough to realize like, we've got to win the games that we know That's we're right. supposed to win. The, 
yeah, I, I'm not saying they're going to lose that game. I've got them winning it. I've got them seven and five. If they finish six and six, it would not shock me. If Troy is, if Troy, is one of the they losses. could still finish seven and five. They could. I think that that's a easily winnable game for Troy. I've got them losing at Michigan, at Wisconsin, at Northwestern, all the big at teams Ohio are State, and at Iowa. Oh, and Northwestern. Okay. Or so I've, I've got I've got all of their road games as losses. Yeah. I think they go undefeated at home. I think they they I've got them beating Michigan State. See, I, I I can't see that. <laughs> You're like I can't pull that one. I can't do that one. But I love. But I I'm a but D'Antonio. I got them going over the six. I'm, I'm in I'm in the tank with D'Antonio. I don't know that I would touch the six because of the. I've got them winning the Troy game, and that game just – I probably will be betting Troy in that. And whatever the line is, they're going to be catching points. Yeah, they'll definitely be catching points. I'll be taking whatever the points are. So, All right, let's move on to Northwestern. Our guys. Oh, Westlot Pirates, boys. Yeah. All about it, all about it. If you haven't heard their podcast, go check it out, Westlot Pirates. Northwestern's over-under this year is six. Last year, Northwestern went 10-3. and three. They went 7-2 and two in conference. Unbelievable. And they're over under six. They lost a lot of talent. They had a they, lot of seniors. They, they last really year, did. Right? What, what do you have them at? I got them at six and six. Look, I got them at seven and five. Okay. I, got we're not, I mean, we're not, I mean they, I got a couple um, of games that could go either way, and that you know whatever. Look, they got seven starters back on offense and seven starters back on defense. Like that's that's a big thing for experience for a Pat team Fitzgerald. that won yeah. ten games last year. Yeah, quarterback Clayton Thorson returns. He uh, he got hurt late. Running back Jeremy Larkin takes over for Justin Jackson. Their top two receivers are back. Four out of five are back on the offensive line. Uh, they lose four of their top seven tacklers on defense, though, and the schedule is pretty tough. Um, they've got Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, and at Iowa. And What do you think of the Duke game? See, that's, that's part of the problem. Smart kids coming on. This is smart kid on smart kid violence here. I think it's the fact that it's at Northwestern at North, definitely I, helps them. And I, and you, you know, but that's a tough like for them. That's really tough. That's tough opening two game stretch, right? Because like, they play like at Fitz Purdue Patrick a lot, though. They play at Purdue the first Thursday of the year, August thirtieth. Yep, that's a tough ask. That road game to open the season. Those Thursday night road games are tough. But I, I'll tell you what, I've got them beating Purdue. I've, here are my losses. They got five losses to me. I got losing uh, at home to Michigan, Michigan at State, Michigan back State. Back. Uh, I've got them beating Nebraska. Um, I've got them losing to Wisconsin, got them losing to Notre Dame, losing at Iowa, but then a win at Minnesota and a win against Illinois to close out. So I got them winning the first uh, three games of the year. Then they got a bye week, and then I think they lose at home to Michigan. Yeah. I'm I'm just up in the air on either the Purdue. I've got them losing to Purdue or Duke. I think they'll lose one of Man, those do games. You, do you have just Purdue because... losing a game? Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. It seems like every one of these has been like, look, I got them losing to Purdue. I, I have, like, I, I do have Purdue. We are going to be a lot different, probably. Though. I think so. We're on them now. That's. A, are you ready to jump in? I'm. I got them seven and five. Let's talk about Jeff Brom. I over, like Jeff. Brom. Over under is six. I've got him at seven and five. I like Jeff Brom. I like Jeff Brom a lot. I like Jeff Brom too. But I will tell you this: last year they won a lot of games with their defense, right? I'm okay with that. They won a lot of games with defense, and. Here's the deal. They went seven and six last year, lost the bowl game. Um, look, nine starters are back on offense. Only four are back on defense. I do think the offense will get better. Well, that's it. But the defense led them to wins last year, and the schedule is way more difficult this year. They but, are going to be an underdog in nine games this year. Uh, none of that stuff matters. Jeff Brom is a good coach. Yes, they're they're losing guys. They won on defense last year. They won't win on defense this year. He has another year to put his offense in to get his offense going to get his guys running that offense. That doesn't scare me. I got him four and eight, and that's fine. And and I'll tell you this: like if they finish six and six, I wouldn't be shocked. I would be a little shocked if they were five and seven. And anything worse than that, I think we're pretty far off on. I I, I could see it. I could see. It. I think, Jeff, look, but you know how much value I put in coaching. I've I've got them losing. I'll go on and tell you the losses. And none of these are crazy. Uh, I've got them losing at home to Northwestern first night of the year. I've actually got them losing to Missouri. But, yeah, you're crazy on Missouri, though. You're just 
I don't think I I'm think crazy. history is going to show that you're wrong. On I think Missouri is going to come out and throw the football all over the field That's because fine. their defense is That's not fine. as good this I don't, year. I don't. I don't know that they have NFL receivers. I could be wrong. On I that. do have them beating Boston College, who I think is a dark horse to win their division in the ACC. Dark, yeah, that defense is real good. Yeah. By the way, um, I've got them losing at Nebraska, losing to Ohio State, losing at Michigan State, losing to Iowa, losing at Minnesota, losing to Wisconsin, and then I've got them winning at Indiana to end the year. But see, you're 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 taking. Like I said, that Iowa win, I have them winning at Iowa. But but Iowa does this every year. They lose yeah. they're gonna lose to somebody. Yeah. Why can't it be Purdue? I'm with you. And it could easily be I think it's gonna be a home game they're gonna lose, actually, because that's just what they do. That's entirely possible. They just they just lay an egg somewhere. So You ready to move to Wisconsin? Let's go to Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I can't believe we're going to have the same record for so many of these teams. And we Look, didn't talk beforehand. With, we no, we really don't talk stuff. before. No, we don't um, compare notes. Wisconsin went 13-1 and last year, 9-0 and in the Big Ten until the uh, Big Ten championship game. Uh, their over-under this year is 10. They've got nine offensive starters back, including quarterback Alex Hornibrook, running back Jonathan Taylor, who went over 2,000 yards last year. They've got six of their top receivers back. They've only got four defensive starters back. Uh, but three of their four leading tacklers are returning, including that's, senior that's, linebacker yeah. Ryan Conley. Yeah. He's going to be a beast this year. Yep. Um, I wanted to give them more losses. You, I wanted to. But you couldn't find them. But I couldn't find them. Couldn't even. I, I just – I don't see – look. But I didn't it, want to. I love this team. Who do you have them losing to? I got them losing to – at Iowa. They're the one team – What? They're the one team that Iowa is going to come in – He's going to be a dog. They're, they're going to be favorites. And, and, and they're probably – no, sorry. Wisconsin's going to be a road favorite going yes. into Iowa, probably. And Iowa's going to beat their – Look, I've got them beating Iowa, beating Nebraska, but then I've got them losing at Michigan. See, i got them beating Michigan. I've got them winning at Northwestern. That's, that's Michigan's only loss. I've got them winning at Penn State. i got them winning – no, we both have them 11-1, and one, Gary. I, I, We're I'm both just, going over – and 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 if they my loss is at Michigan. I will tell you this: if they went undefeated, it would not shock me. If they don't go undefeated, I could see Michigan going undefeated. Do you think Paul Christ gets enough credit? Nope, he does not at all. I love Wisconsin. Now you know this: I have been a Wisconsin believer since I was a fat kid watching football, and every head coach that takes over up there puts 500 yards of offense on the ground, and their offensive linemen are all the best offensive linemen in the NFL. And and I just – it's one of the reasons I worship Joe Thomas. I watched him be a four-year starter at Wisconsin, graduate, go to the Browns, number one pick, and, and I've watched him his entire career. I, I love this team. They don't change. The head coach changes. They don't change. No, I think, I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. Uh, we both got Wisconsin winning the division. So that means we have Wisconsin and Michigan playing in the championship game. Well, I've got Ohio State, but yeah, remember I've got Ohio State ten and two, but I've got them beating Michigan. But what other loss do you have him? TCU. Oh, it's okay. not a conference, a conference loss. Yeah. So yeah. So Ohio State, and Wisconsin, or Michigan and Wisconsin. Michigan, Either way, we've got be Wisconsin. Michigan, Wisconsin. Michigan going to the playoffs. <laughs> that but, wouldn't surprise me. I love you, Wisconsin. 